In this video, I'm going to show you guys my favorite way to use a carpet extractor. It doesn't matter what kind you have, this is actually going to work for every kind of extractor. And stay tuned to the end because this is probably not quite the normal way to use one. So really quick before we get into the content of this video, this particular strategy is one that I use when the carpet is hammered and when it's almost matted down. What I mean by that is when you have a regularly or averagely soiled carpet, this is not necessary. Again, this is the particular measures that I take with a bunch of different tools and particularly my extractor strategy when I'm dealing with a floor board that no matter how much you vacuum it and no matter how much you extract it in the regular traditional way with an extractor, you're not going to get all of that dirt out. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the before look at the mat that we're working with today. You can see what I'm talking about. The fibers are matted down. They've been trampled on. There's a ton of dirt, dust, everything. This is actually after vacuuming. So I just want to explain in detail, this is the kind of mat I'm talking about doing this strategy with. You can vacuum it all day long and you can extract it in the traditional way all day long and it ain't gonna work like you want it to. So that's a quick look it's pretty disgusting. So step number one is going to be literally just taking your pressure washer and trying to rinse it as best you can. Now you can see there's some like weird stuff happening here. This mat was actually treated with the smart fabric from G Technic. So while it is pushing out the dirt and stuff and the pressure washer is certainly working, you can see those hydrophobic properties of the mat. It also is actually a good time to explain, you can have a protective coating on a carpet like this and it's still going to get dirty. So the point here is that the protective coating makes it hydrophobic, number one, and number two, it makes it way easier to clean next time around, but it doesn't keep it from getting dirty. And that's an important distinction, kind of a misnomer that ends up happening in the detailing industry. People are like, I applied this thing and now it's dirty. It's like, yeah, it's gonna make it easier to clean next time around. So step number two, I am pumping up my sprayer, my pressurized sprayer. I just have a degreaser diluted here somewhere like five to one. You can use your favorite cleaner, all-purpose cleaner, degreaser, whatever you want. And I'm just spraying the mat and I am going to soak it, all right? So that's actually important. I'm soaking the mat in the cleaner. So I'm not being conservative with it at all, being super liberal with it. No, that's not a political agenda. I'm just talking about the way I'm using the product. So I've got my degreaser in here. I'm soaking it in the cleaner as best I can. And again, please use a lot of product. The idea is to make a mess. I know some of you are thinking, Luke, when you're soaking it like that, you're gonna make it turn into mud. There's dirt in there. Yes, that's true. That is actually part of what's going to happen here because it's not going to vacuum out. And unless you take extreme measures, it's also not going to extract out at the highest level that it could. So just make sure that you use a lot of product. Now, next I am taking my yellow drill brush. It is just the medium stiffness drill brush and I'm going to town on this mat. Yes, it's gonna get worse before it gets better, all right? It's just one of those things and it comes with the territory. Now, this particular drill brush I'm using, of course I'm using my Wilson Auto Detailing branded drill brushes because again, I specifically modified them for car carpet, car upholstery, different things, headliner, everything you could imagine and so the medium stiffness one here, no matter you know how many times I use it on a carpet, it's not going to cause the fibers to fray. It's not going to hurt any of that sewed edge out there. If you can see what I'm talking about, that kind of hems in the carpet. A lot of times these drill brushes, you need to be careful with them because while they can work for a while, you're going to come to a carpet that is more fragile than you expected, particularly maybe Mercedes or BMW that is actually um, traditional carpeting and you can damage it without even realizing it. And again, it is all about the details. So yes, this is my Wilson Auto Detailing medium stiffness one that I'm using. And I want to use a medium stiffness drill brush for this. <laughs> you guys can see I'm filming with my other camera there. You guys know that you want to use a medium one. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's going to be strong enough to really stir up a lot of that dirt. And that's what you're after. Make a bit of a mess. It is a-okay to do that. It's kind of the point because again, it's not going to come up otherwise. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take out that pressure washer again, and I'm going to be pretty organized in how I'm doing this. You can see I'm pushing all of those suds and ultimately all that dirt like from top to bottom, and I'm going to do this a few times, but basically I'm just draining the mat. 
This is a super important point. I would use a pressure washer when you're doing this because you're going to get it better than any other thing is going to get it. And by the time I'm done pressure washing this, basically 99% of that dirt is gone that would not have been taken care of with just this regular little kind of weak extraction spray, if that makes sense. So finally, my last step is to obviously take the extractor and I'm going to dry up the carpet. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using my Mighty Light 8070. This is a heated carpet extractor. I think it's about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars. It's a very nice machine. Now, this is going to suck all of the water out, obviously. However, after I do my initial like sucking of the water out of the carpet, I am going to utilize that heated water and I'm actually going to go over the carpet with that really hot water and I'm going to spray it into the carpet, use an extractor in the traditional way. Again, this is after I've kind of pulled all the water out from the pressure washer, then I go for the traditional route and I use that really hot water and I do it like anybody else would. Why do I do that? Because this is like the final way of going, okay, I'm taking care of all of the dirt. Like if there's anything left in here that wasn't pushed out by the pressure washer or that wasn't, you know, got by the drill brush or like whatever you could possibly think of, this is going to take care of the rest without an issue, okay? No, you don't have to have a heated water extractor, but of course it helps, you know, the more, the, the higher the temperature, the faster the particles are moving, the better cleaning you're gonna do, okay? For obvious reasons, right? But the idea here is, even if you didn't have an extractor that, let's just say you had an extractor that broke and it didn't spray water, you would be fine with just sucking the water out that was from the pressure washer, okay? I don't have to do this last step. I'm doing it because I'm a detailer. It's all in the details. This is like perfect of the perfect. This is perfection of perfection. This carpet is going to be totally clean. And then I just go over it one last time. I don't like cleaning marks, so I'm going to make them go in all one direction when I'm done, but I am just going to suck all the water out, and that's going to be kind of my last resort here, my last uh, step. Just make it dry. That's, I'm finished. Then, very simply, I just set it on some steps, and I let it sit in the sun, all right? I just, it's totally clean. I just want it to dry. You can blow dry it, whatever you like. Make sure it's dry. Um, everything that I used in this video is kind of listed here. The extractor, the hose, the drill, the drill brush, the pressurized sprayer, the smart fabric, that's the protectant, and the Sunjo pressure washer. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a clear view of everything that it took. So I hope that video helped you guys understand a little bit about what I do and why I do it and all the tools that I use. If you guys would like to get your hands on or check out any of the tools used in this video, I'm gonna hook up Amazon links and other links depending on where I got them to every tool and product in this video below in the YouTube description box. So definitely use those links below if you can. Thank you guys so much for watching and being involved in the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you're new here and you love everything auto detailing, then consider hitting the red subscribe button. And as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard and I will see you guys in the next video.